Chairman, I have a question for uh, Chairman Bernanke. During the early part of the decade, um, a lot of the free market economists would keep saying, well, interest rates are too low, too long, and there was a financial bubble and a housing bubble, and there had to be a correction. And, of course, we did in 2008. Since 2008, many of the mainstream economists have more or less agreed with that assessment because frequently we'll hear them say interest rates were held too low, too long. And I think even uh, Secretary Geithner has had made that statement. Where, where do you come down on that perception? Do you think interest rates are held too low, too long? Um, well, Congressman, I've, I've given a speech on this, and I, I think the bottom line is that uh, nobody really knows for sure, but that the evidence is really quite mixed. Um, and I would say that even if they were uh, too low for too long, um, the magnitude of the error was not big enough to account for the huge crisis we had. I think what caused the crisis was the failures of regulation. And I would, I would fault the Fed here, too, because one, some of those failures were ours in the sense that we didn't do enough, and I've admitted this and acknowledged this many times, we didn't do enough on mortgage regulation. So um, I think it was the, the weakness of the regulatory system, not monetary policy, that was most important here. Of course, I don't uh, agree with that, but um, if, if you assume for a minute that it was too low too long and you had perfect regulations, what is the harm done by interest rates being too low too long? Do, do you, do you uh, see any damage by interest rates being artificially low for a long period of time? It, let's just sort, sort that away from uh, uh, regulations for a second. Well, certainly one possibility, which uh, my colleague to the left knows a lot about is, is that if you keep rates too low for too long, you get inflation, and that every central banker wants to be sure that the price level remains stable, and that's an important consideration. Do you, do you think the investor, the businessman, makes mistakes if interest rates are lower than, say, the market? Uh, aren't low interest rates an indication that there are savings? And if there's no savings, but the interest rates are low because of uh, n newly created credit by the Fed. Does that not send a false signal to some investors and some business people? Well, if interest rates are below their normal levels, it's because the economy is operating at a very low level. I mean, currently we're not in anything that an economist would call uh, a Pareto optimal equilibrium or anything like that. We certainly are in a situation where a lot of people are out of work and uh, consumption is well below its normal levels, and low interest rates serve the function of increasing demand and putting people back to work. But, but you don't think that if interest rates are 2 and 3 percent instead of 6 percent, you know, without artificially low interest rates, there won't be a temptation for people to build too many houses or the people to, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to capitalize on the fact that they are anticipating price inflation and, and participate in, in, in the bubble? Well, Congressman, interest rates are very low right now, and I don't think building too many houses is really a problem. And, and that makes the very important point. You know, in the boom part of the cycle, low interest rates cause people to do things that might not be proper and the best for the economy. And then when the bus comes, uh, we resort to the same policy of keeping interest rates, you know, extremely low for too long. What, what are the chances? Do you think there's any chance in a year or two or three from now we'll look back and say, well, not only were they too long, too low too long in the early part of the decade, that they were too low too long in the latter part of the decade, because, because when the prices start to go up, I mean, it's sort of, uh, you, you know, a little bit too late, then you, then you have the job of uh, reining that all in. Well, it's a difficult uh, central banking is an art, and we need to balance our dual mandate. Our dual mandate is to maximum employment and price stability, and we need to try to find an appropriate policy that gets us as close as we can to both sides of that mandate. See, the, the free market people see that the dependency on regulation is, is just, uh, you know, imaginary because the fault is all these mistakes being made because they have false information. Price fixing, nobody's advocating wage and price controls because of all the false information. You can't run an economy with price fixing. That's why socialism fails. But if you fix the price of interest rates, it's one half of the economy because you're messing around with the monetary system. And then all of a sudden, instead of dealing with that, we say, we just need more and smarter regulations and we're going to solve all these problems. That doesn't concern you at all? Well, you need some system to set the money supply. What, you know, I know you, I guess you're a gold standard uh, supporter. Is that, I don't know if that's correct. Um, for the Constitution. Um, I, 
the uh, every major country though currently in the world uses a central bank which must make some decision about the money supply whether it's to keep it s stable or to move it around it's nevertheless a choice that's made but then there's no good information the for the investor unfortunately the gentleman's time has expired the gentleman from california mr chairman's